Pop music is a genre of popular music that originated in its modern form in the United States and United Kingdom during the mid-1950s. The terms, popular music, and pop music, are often used interchangeably, although the former describes all music that is popular and includes many diverse styles. Pop and rock were roughly synonymous terms until the late 1960s, when they became increasingly differentiated from each other. Although much of the music that appears on record charts is seen as pop music, the genre is distinguished from chart music. Pop music is eclectic, and often borrows elements from other styles such as urban, dance, rock, Latin, and country. Nonetheless, there are core elements that define pop music. Identifying factors include generally short to medium length songs written in a basic format, often the verse chorus structure, as well as common use of repeated choruses, melodic tunes, and hooks. Topic. Definitions and etymology David Hatch and Stephen Millward define pop music as a body of music which is distinguishable from popular, jazz, and folk musics. According to Pete Seeger, pop music is professional music which draws upon both folk music and fine arts music. Although pop music is seen as just the singles charts, it is not the sum of all chart music. The music charts contain songs from a variety of sources, including classical, jazz, rock, and novelty songs. As a genre, pop music is seen to exist and develop separately. Therefore, the term, pop music may be used to describe a distinct genre, designed to appeal to all, often characterized as instant singles-based music aimed at teenagers, in contrast to rock music as album-based music for adults. Pop music continuously evolves along with the term's definition. According to music writer Bill Lamb, popular music is defined as the music since industrialization in the 1800s that is most in line with the tastes and interests of the urban middle class. The term, pop song, was first used in 1926, in the sense of a piece of music, having popular appeal. Hatch and Millward indicate that many events in the history of recording in the 1920s can be seen as the birth of the modern pop music industry, including in country, blues, and hillbilly music. According to the website of the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, the term pop music originated in Britain in the mid-1950s as a description for rock and roll and the new youth music styles that it influenced. The Oxford Dictionary of Music states that while pop's earlier meaning meant concerts appealing to a wide audience, since the late 1950s, however, pop has had the special meaning of non-classical muse I see, usually in the form of songs, performed by such artists as the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, ABBA, etc. Grove Music Online also states that in the early 1960s, the term pop music competed terminologically with beat music in England, while in the US its coverage overlapped as it still does with that of rock and roll. From about 1967, the term pop music was increasingly used in opposition to the term rock music, a division that gave generic significance to both terms. While rock aspired to authenticity and an expansion of the possibilities of popular music, pop was more commercial, ephemeral, and accessible. According to British musicologist Simon Frith, pop music is produced as a matter of enterprise not art, and as 
designed to appeal to everyone, but doesn't come from any particular place or mark off any particular taste. Frith adds that it is not driven by any significant ambition except profit and commercial reward. And, in musical terms, it is essentially conservative. It is provided from on high by record companies, radio programmers, and concert promoters rather than being made from below. Pop is not a do-it-yourself music but is professionally produced and packaged. Topic. Characteristics According to Frith, characteristics of pop music include an aim of appealing to a general audience, rather than to a particular subculture or ideology, and an emphasis on craftsmanship rather than formal, artistic qualities. Music scholar Timothy Warner said it typically has an emphasis on recording, production, and technology, rather than live performance, a tendency to reflect existing trends rather than progressive developments, and aims to encourage dancing or uses dance oriented rhythms. The main medium of pop music is the song, often between two and a half and three and a half minutes in length, generally marked by a consistent and noticeable rhythmic element, a mainstream style and a simple traditional structure. Common variants include the verse-chorus form and the 32-bar form, with a focus on melodies and catchy hooks, and a chorus that contrasts melodically, rhythmically and harmonically with the verse. The beat and the melodies tend to be simple, with limited harmonic accompaniment. The lyrics of modern pop songs typically focus on simple themes, often love and romantic relationships, although there are notable exceptions, harmony and chord progressions in pop music are often that of classical European tonality, only more simple-minded. Clichés include the barbershop quartet-style harmony i.e. E, v, I, and blues scale-influenced harmony. There was a lessening of the influence of traditional views of the circle of fifths between the mid-1950s and the late 1970s, including less predominance for the dominant function. Topic. Development and influence Topic. Stylistic evolution Throughout its development, pop music has absorbed influences from other genres of popular music, vocal harmonies from gospel and soul music, instrumentation from jazz and rock music, orchestration from classical music, tempo from dance music, backing from electronic music, rhythmic elements from hip hop music, and spoken passages from rap. Topic. 1950s, origins Traditional pop of the 1920s to 1940s eventually went out of style in the 1950s as rock and roll grew to become the most popular music genre in that era. From the mid-1950s, the term pop began to be used for a distinct genre often characterized as a softer alternative to rock and roll, pop rock. Its main catering audience was the youth market. Artists that are considered to be pop rock include Buddy Holly, Elvis Presley, and Roy Orbison. The detractors of pop rock often deride it as a slick, commercial product that is less authentic than rock music although often ignored by musical historians pop music played a significant role in the development of rock and roll as well mitch miller also conceived of the idea of the pop record sound 
per se, not so much an arrangement or a tune, but an oral texture usually replete with extramusical gimmicks that could be created in the studio and then replicated in live performance, instead of the other way around. Miller was hardly a rock in roller, yet without these ideas there could never have been rock and roll. Mule Train Miller's first major hit for Frankie Lane and the foundation of his career, set the pattern for virtually the entire first decade of rock. The similarities between it and, say, leader of the pack, need hardly be outlined here. Topic. 1960s, expansion of pop fusion and sub-genres, surf rock craze, and the British invasion. Topic Baroque pop The genre is traced to the United States and the United Kingdom. By early 1966, various groups began using Baroque and classical instrumentation, described as a Baroque rock movement by Gendron. The Zombies single She's Not There 1964 marked a starting point for British Baroque pop. Bob Stanley from The Guardian explains that the song didn't feature any oboes but stuck out rather dramatically in 1964, the year of You Really Got Me and Little Red Rooster, She's Not There would inspire New York musician Michael Brown to form the Left Bank, whose song Walk Away Renee 1966 is considered by Stanley to be the first recognizable Baroque pop single. Baroque Rock was the label devised by the band's publicists and the music press. According to Richie Unterberger, the sobriquet may have been ham-fisted, but certainly there were many Baroque elements in the left bank's pop, the stately arrangements, the brilliant use of keyboards and harpsichords, the soaring violins, and the beautiful group harmonies. Guerrieri says that, in Britain, the song, bridged the passage from rock into psychedelica for numerous groups, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Zombies, and the Kinks. Conversely, Decider wrote that the Beach Boys album Pet Sounds May 1966 almost single-handedly created the idea of Baroque pop, the only track on the album that employs a harpsichord in conjunction with a string section as God Only Knows. The Sydney Morning Herald deemed the song a particularly exquisite example of Baroque pop, whereas the record's Jim Beckerman called it Baroque rock in the same retro instrumentation and elegant harmonies vein as the Beatles' Eleanor Rigby August 1966 and Procol Harem's A Whiter Shade of Pale 1967. Gendron's Baroque rock examples include Walk Away Renee with Spanky and Our Gang's Sunday Will Never Be the Same 1967 and The Stone Ponies Different Drum 1967 all of which used harpsichord and strings Stanley highlighted a strand of baroque pop he calls English baroque it being a combined simulacrum of the Zombies album Odyssey and Oracle 1968 Paul McCartney's contribution to the White Album 1968, Honeybuzz single I Can't Let Maggie Go 1968, Scott Walker's Chamber Pop, and Crosby, Stills and Nash Vocal Harmonies Topic. Beatlemania and the British Invasion Beatlemania and the British Invasion were cultural phenomenons when rock and pop music acts from the United Kingdom became widely popular in the United States. The Beatles were among these acts, and their mix of beat, rock, and pop ballads immediately took over American pop charts. Other bands that took part in this invasion included the English pop rock group, the Dave Clark Five. Their single, over and Over, was number one on American charts in 1965, beating out the Beatles. Topic. Bubblegum Pop 
According to Stephen Earlywine of All Music, bubblegum pop is a manufactured pop subgenre, created by record producers that often hired session musicians to play and sing the songs. He elaborates that bubblegum pop was simple, melodic, and light as feather, and neither the lyrics or the music had much substance. Topic. Orchestral pop In the 1960s, the majority of mainstream pop music fell in two categories, guitar, drum and bass groups or singers backed by a traditional orchestra. Since early in the decade, it was common for pop producers, songwriters, and engineers to freely experiment with musical form, orchestration, unnatural reverb, and other sound effects. Some of the best-known examples are Phil Spector's Wall of Sound and Joe Meek's use of homemade electronic sound effects for acts like the Tornadoes. At the same time, pop music on radio and in both American and British film moved away from refined Tin Pan Alley to more eccentric songwriting and incorporated reverb-drenched rock guitar, symphonic strings, and horns played by groups of properly arranged and rehearsed studio musicians. Topic. Progressive pop. During the mid-1960s, pop music made repeated forays into new sounds, styles, and techniques that inspired public discourse among its listeners. The word, progressive, was frequently used, and it was thought that every song and single was to be a progression from the last. Music critic Simon Reynolds writes that beginning with 1967, a divide would exist between progressive pop and mass chart pop, a separation which was also, broadly, one between boys and girls, middle class and working class. Before the progressive pop of the late 1960s, performers were typically unable to decide on the artistic content of their music. Assisted by the mid-1960s economic boom, record labels began investing in artists, giving them the freedom to experiment, and offering them limited control over their content and marketing. This situation fell in disuse after the late 1970s and would not re-emerge until the rise of internet stars. Author Bill Martin recognizes the Beatles and the Beach Boys as the most significant contributors to the development of progressive rock, transforming rock from dance music into music that was made for listening to. Citing a quantitative study of tempos in music from the era, musicologist Walter Everett identifies the Beatles' 1965 album Rubber Soul as a work that was made more to be thought about than danced to, and an album that began a far-reaching trend in its slowing down of the tempos typically used in pop and rock music. Topic. Surf pop Topic. Hot Rod Rock Hot Rod Music, or Hot Rod Rock, evolved from surf music. According to the Ultimate Hot Rod Dictionary by Jeff Breitenstein, while cars and, to a lesser degree, hot rods have been a relatively common and enduring theme in American popular music, the term hot rod music is most often associated with the unique California sound music of the early to mid-1960s and was defined by its rich vocal harmonies, amplified, generally Fender brand, electric guitars, and youth-oriented lyrics most often celebrating hot rods and, more broadly, surfing and girls. Author David Ferrandino wrote that the Beach Boys' musical treatments of both cars and surfboards are identical, whereas author Jeffrey Himes elaborated subtle 
differences, translating the surf music format into hot rod tunes wasn't difficult. If surf music was a lot of Dick Dale and some Chuck Berry, hot rod music was a little more Berry and a little less Dale, i.e. less percussive staccato and more chiming riffs. Instead of slang about waxes and boards, you used slang about carburetors and pistons. Instead of name dropping the top surfing beaches, you cited the nicknames for the top drag racing strips. Instead of warning about the dangers of a wipeout, you warned of dead man's curve. Topic popularity of surf music In late 1961, the Beach Boys had their first chart hit, Surfin', which peaked at number 75 on the Billboard Hot 100, followed by Surfin' USA 1963 and Surfer Girl 1963, which reached the top 10. In mid-1962, the group released their major label debut, Surfin' Safari. The song hit number 14 and helped launch the surf rock craze into a national phenomenon. Breitenstein writes that Hot Rod Rock gained national popularity beginning in 1962 with the Beach Boys 409, which is often credited with initiating the Hot Rod music craze, which lasted until 1965. Several key figures would lead the Hot Rod movement beside Wilson, including songwriter-producer-musician Gary Usher and songwriter-disc jockey Roger Christian. Wilson then co-wrote Surf City 1963 for Jan and Dean, which spent two weeks at the top of the Billboard Top 100 chart in July 1963. In the wake of the Beach Boys' success, many singles by New Surfing and Hot Rod groups were produced by Los Angeles groups. Himes notes, most of these weren't real groups, they were just a singer or two backed by the same floating pool of session musicians, often including Glenn Campbell, Hal Blaine and Bruce Johnston. If a single happened to click, a group would be hastily assembled and sent out on tour. It was an odd blend of amateurism and professionalism. One hit wonders included Bruce and Terry with Summer Means Fun, the Rivieras with California Sun, Ronnie and the Daytonas with GTO, and the Rip Chords with Hey Little Cobra. The latter two hits both reached the top ten, but the only other act to achieve sustained success with the formula were Jan and Dean. Hot Rod group The Fantastic Baggies wrote many songs for Jan and Dean and also performed a few vocals for the duo. Topic. 1970s, soft rock, punk rock, and country influences Topic. Country pop Country pop was emerging during this time period, which stemmed from country artists' attempts to reach a more mainstream audience. Acts included Glenn Campbell, John Denver, Olivia Newton-John, and Anne Murray. By the 1970s, Nashville had been fully established as a music center with its own regional sound. In order to market country music internationally, Music Row executives polished the raw sound of the outlaw eras of country music, and created a middle-of-the-road sound with harmonious string sections and vocal choruses. Country pop can be distinguished through two major styles, soft-shell country and hardcore country. Soft-shell country is described as a polished form of country music. The lyrical content is usually written in a standardized American grammar and performed without any distinctive accent. Singers tried and reproduced feelings and ideas of the songwriter in a way that a broad audience can relate to them. As for hardcore country, it is characterized by its twangy speech and nasal intonation. Its performers usually go in and out of meter to tell the story of the song, usually admitting to their own vices. George Jones is an example of hardcore country music. 
Topic: Indie pop. Indie pop, which developed in the late 1970s, marked another departure from the glamour of contemporary pop music, with guitar bands formed on the then novel premise that one could record and release their own music without having to procure a record contract from a major label. Both indie and indie pop had originally referred to the same thing during the late 1970s. Inspired more by punk rock's DIY ethos than its style, guitar bands were formed on the then novel premise that one could record and release their own music instead of having to procure a record contract from a major label. According to Emily Dolan, indie is predicated on the distorted music of the Velvet Underground, the rebellious screaming of early punk, and some of rock's more quirky and eccentric figures, such as Jonathan Richman. Pitchfork's Nitsa Abib identifies the majority of indie as all about that 60s-styled guitar jangle. Distinguished from the angst and abrasiveness of its indie rock counterpart, the majority of indie pop borrows not only the stripped-down quality of punk, but also the sweetness and catchiness of mainstream pop. Music critic Simon Reynolds says that indie pop defines itself against charting pop. Abib explains, one of those things was the idea that rock music was supposed to be cool, cool, meaning sexy, tough, arty, fiery, or fantastical. The charts had cool covered these kids, in their basements and bedrooms, were trying to handcraft a mirror image of it, a pop world where they were the stars. And a little bit of a raspberry blown at the larger musical world, which sensibly went right on preferring something more interesting than average white kids playing simple pop songs. Simon Reynolds has said that what we now know as indie music was invented in Scotland, with reference to the emergence of postcard records in 1979. However, some have posited that concept of indie music did not crystallize until the late 1980s and early 1990s. American indie pop band Beat Happening's 1985 eponymous debut album was also influential in the development of the indie pop sound, particularly in North America. In the early 1990s, English indie pop influenced and branched off to a variety of styles. The U.S., which did not have as much of a scene in the 1980s, had many indie pop enthusiasts by the mid-1990s. Most of the modern notion of indie music stems from NME's 1986 compilation C86, which collects many guitar bands who were inspired by the early psychedelic sounds of 1960s garage rock. Topic. Power pop Power Pop enjoyed a highly successful and commercial peak in the late 1970s to the early 1980s as it was being spurred on by the emergence of new wave and punk rock. The genre was defined by bands such as The Romantics and Cheap Trick. Ultimately, the groups with the best-selling records were Cheap Trick, The Knack, The Romantics, and Dwight Twilley, whereas the records, The Nerves, and 2020 only drew cult followings. Writing for Time in 1978, Jay Cox cited Nick Lowe and Dave Edmonds as the most accomplished purveyors of power pop, which he described as the well-groomed stepbrother of punk rock. Edmonds was quoted, Before the new wave, there was no chance for the little guy who buys a guitar and starts a band. What we're doing is kids' music, really, just for four time and good songs. Cheap Trick became the most successful act in the genre's history thanks to the band's constant touring schedule and stage theatrics. 
According to Andrew Earls, the group's astonishing acceptance in Japan documented on 1979's at Budokan and hits Surrender and I Want You to Want Me, the trick took power pop to an arena level and attained a degree of success that the genre had never seen, nor would ever see again. Topic. Soft rock Soft rock, a derivative of pop rock, was prominently featured on many top 40 and contemporary hit radio stations throughout the 1970s. Soft rock often used acoustic instruments and placed emphasis on melody and harmonies. Major soft rock artists of the 1970s included Carole King, James Taylor, Billy Joel, Chicago, America, The Eagles and Fleetwood Mac, whose Rumors 1977 was the best-selling album of the decade. Topic. 1980s, synth and pop metal era Topic dance pop In the beginning of the 1980s, disco was an anathema to the mainstream pop. According to prominent all-music critic Stephen Thomas Earlywine, Madonna had a huge role in popularizing dance music as mainstream music, utilizing her charisma, chutzpah and sex appeal. Earlywine claimed that Madonna launched dance pop and set the standard for the genre for the next two decades. As the primary songwriter on her self-titled debut album and a co-producer by her third record, Madonna's insistence on being involved in all creative aspects of her work was highly unusual for a female dance pop vocalist at the time. The staff of Vice magazine stated that her debut album drew the blueprint for future dance pop in the 1980s. Dance pop was closely aligned to other uptempo electronic genres, such as synth pop and high NRG. Prominent producers in the 1980s included Stock, Aitken, and Waterman, who created high NRG, dance pop for artists such as Kylie Minogue, Dead or Alive, and Bananarama. During the decade, dance pop borrowed influences from funk, e.g., Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston, New Jack Swing, e.g., Janet Jackson and Paula Abdul, and contemporary R&B. Other prominent dance pop artists and groups of the 1980s included the Pet Shop Boys, Mel and Kim, Samantha Fox, Debbie Gibson, and Tiffany. Topic. Glam metal Glam metal, or pejoratively, hair metal, was the most popular form of hard rock during the decade. It consisted of a blend of British glam rock, pop hooks, riffs, and arena rock. The most active glam metal scene was starting to appear in clubs on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, including The Trip, The Whiskey A Go Go, and The Starwood. These clubs began to avoid booking punk rock bands because of fears of violence and began booking many area metal bands, usually on a pay-to-play basis, thus creating a vibrant scene for hard rock music. Popular bands included Motley Crue, Twisted Sister, Poison, Dokken, and Guns N' Roses. Topic. Synth pop. In the 1980s, the digital synthesizer became more prominent in pop music than the analog synth after new wave music popularized the instrument from the previous decade. Instruments were being synced via MIDI so that the backing tracks typically rhythm, were recorded in a perfect tempo. This gave way to a new era of synth pop and dance pop, as the MIDI keyboard simplified the creation of electronic effects. The keyboard was deemed by Bullet Music's Taylor Maddox as a dominating force of synthesized instrumentation that would come to define much of pop music throughout the 1980s. Early synth pop has been described as eerie, sterile, and vaguely menacing, 
using droning electronics with little change in inflection. Later the introduction of dance beats made the music warmer and catchier and contained within the conventions of three-minute pop. Duran Duran, who emerged from the Birmingham scene, have been credited with incorporating a dance-orientated rhythm section into synthpop to produce a catchier and warmer sound, which provided them with a series of hit singles. Topic. New Romantic The New Romantic movement was a pop culture movement that originated in the United Kingdom in the late 1970s. The movement emerged from the nightclub scene in London and Birmingham at venues such as Billy's and the Blitz. The nightclub scene was associated with bands such as Duran Duran, Visage, and Spandau Ballet. The New Romantic movement was characterized by flamboyant, eccentric fashion inspired by fashion boutiques such as Con and Bell in Birmingham and PX in London. Many bands that emerged from the New Romantic movement became closely associated with the use of synthesizers to create rock and pop music, which has led to the widespread misconception that synthpop and the New Romantic movement were synonymous. Synthpop was prefigured in the 1960s and 1970s by the use of synthesizers in progressive rock, electronic art rock, disco, the kraut rock of bands like Kraftwerk, the three albums made by David Bowie with Brian Eno in his Berlin period, and Yellow Magic Orchestra's early albums. After the breakthrough of Tubeway Army and Gary Newman in the British Singles Chart in 1979, large numbers of artists began to enjoy success with a synthesizer-based sound and they came to dominate the pop music of the early 1980s. Bands that emerged from the new romantic scene and adopted synth-pop included Duran Duran, Visage, and Spandau Ballet, of groups associated with the new romantic movement. Culture Club avoided a total reliance on synthesizers, producing a sound that combined elements of Motown, the Philly sound and lovers rock. Adam and the Ants utilized the African-influenced rhythms of the Burundi beat. Topic. Second British Invasion The Second British Invasion refers to music acts from the United Kingdom that became popular in the United States from the middle of 1982 into late 1986, primarily due to the cable music channel MTV. The term derives from the similar British invasion of the U.S. in the 1960s. While acts with a wide variety of styles were part of the invasion, it was synth-pop and new wave-influenced acts that predominated. According to Rolling Stone, these acts brought a revolution in sound and style. Culture Club and Duran Duran created a teen hysteria, similar to Beatlemania during the first British invasion. In April 1984, 40 of the top 100 singles, and on 25 May 1985 Hot 100, 8 of the top 10 singles, were by acts of British origin. At the second invasion's height, during a three-month period UK acts claimed eight consecutive Hot 100 number one hits, from Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me, through Tears for Fears, Shout. And, were it not for The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the news being on the top during 24 to 31 August, that string would have continued for another seven weeks. Don't you forget about me. Featured in The Breakfast Club represented the first of three British acts to provide the theme song for a Brat Pack film, followed by John Parr's Hot 100 number no. one charting single, Saint Elmo's Fire which was eclipsed at the top by Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, and the psychedelic furs, Pretty in Pink. U.S. radio stations that catered to black audiences also played second invasion acts. Music critic Nelson George ascribed this 
reverse crossover to the danceability of the songs. Another music journalist, Simon Reynolds, theorized that, just as in the first British invasion, the use of black American influences by British acts such as Wham!, Eurythmics, Culture Club, and Paul Young helped to spur their success. Released in 1984, Careless Whisper by George Michael topped the Hot 100. His band Wham! released another 1984 U.S. chart topper. Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. Its music video featured oversized message t shirts created by Catherine Hamnett, starting a craze covered in the 2002 VH1 series One Love the 80s. During the late 1980s, glam metal and dance music replaced second invasion acts atop the U.S. charts. In 2011, The Guardian named the second British invasion among their 50 key events in the history of pop music. Topic: 1990s Emergence of Pop Punk and the Rise, Fall and Resurgence of Teen Pop. Topic: Pop punk The origins of 1990s pop punk can be seen in the more song-oriented bands of the 1970s punk movement like Buzzcocks and The Clash, commercially successful new wave acts such as The Jam and The Undertones, and the more hardcore-influenced elements of alternative rock in the 1980s. Pop punk tends to use power pop melodies and chord changes with speedy punk tempos and loud guitars. Punk music provided the inspiration for some California-based bands on independent labels in the early 1990s, including Rancid, Pennywise, Weezer and Green Day. Blink-182 broke into the mainstream with their 1997 album Dude Ranch. Dude Ranch was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America in 1999. This success opened the door for the multi-platinum sales of metallic punk band The Offspring with Smash 1994. This first wave of pop punk reached its commercial peak with Green Day's Nimrod 1997 and The Offspring's Americana 1998. A second wave of pop punk was spearheaded by Blink-182, with their breakthrough album Enema of the State 1999, followed by bands such as Good Charlotte, Simple Plan and Some 41, who made use of humor in their videos and had a more radio-friendly tone to their music while retaining the speed, some of the attitude and even the look of 1970s punk. Later pop punk bands, including All Time Low, Five Seconds of Summer, The All-American Rejects and Fall Out Boy, had a sound that has been described as closer to 1980s hardcore, while still achieving commercial success. In the 2000s, Canadian solo artist Avril Lavigne, often referred by media and critics as the pop punk queen, found commercial success in 2002 with her punk influenced pop sound. <laughs> Topic. Teen pop As teen pop dominated American charts in 1990 and 1991 with acts such as New Kids on the Block, the genre waned in popularity as grunge and rap music were booming. But in the mid-1990s, a resurgence in boy bands and girl groups began when the Backstreet Boys and the Spice Girls hit the scene and became massive successes. Teen pop also dominated the music scene by the late 1990s and 2000s with female, teenaged pop acts such as Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera rising to superstardom. 2000s present, R&B, EDM, and trap era Topic Contemporary R&B The 2000s saw the dominance of hip-hop and R&B releases with dance beats and pop crossovers, replacing the 1990s trend of sentimental ballads. 
Following periods of fluctuating success, urban music first attained commercial dominance during the early 2000s, which featured massive crossover success on the Billboard charts by R&B and hip-hop artists. In 2001, Alicia Keys released Fallen as her debut single. It peaking at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, Mainstream Top 40 and Hot R&B, Hip Hop Songs charts. It won three Grammy Awards in 2002, including Song of the Year, Best R&B Song, and Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. It was also nominated for Record of the Year. Beyoncé's solo studio debut album Dangerously in Love 2003 has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and earned 5 Grammy awards. Usher's Confessions 2004 sold 1.1 million copies in its first week and over 8 million copies in 2004. Since then, it has been certified diamond by the Recording Industry Association of America (RIAA) and as of 2016, has sold over 10 million copies in the U.S. and over 20 million copies worldwide. Confessions had four consecutive Billboard Hot 100 number one singles, Yeah, Burn, Confessions Part 2, and My Boo. It won one three Grammy Awards in 2005, including Best Contemporary R&B Album, Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal for My Boo and Best Rap – Sung Collaboration for Yeah. In 2004, all 12 songs that topped Billboard Hot 100 were African-American recording artists and accounted for 80% of the number one R&B hits that year. Along with Usher's streak of singles, Top 40 Radio and both pop and R&B charts were topped by Outkast's Hey Ya, Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot, Terror Squad's Lean Back and Sierra's Goodies. Chris Molin Fee of The Village Voice later remarked that by the early 2000s, urban music was pop music. Between 2005 and 2009, Raymond, Knowles, and Keys released albums Bidet, Here I Stand, I Am, Sasha Fierce, and The Element of Freedom. Mariah Carey's The Emancipation of Mimi 2005 debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and earned 10 Grammy Award nominations. She also led her second single off the album, We Belong Together, to number one on the Hot 100 chart for 14 weeks, and was later hailed Song of the Decade by Billboard. She would eventually win a Grammy Award for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for the song in 2006. The mid-2000s came with the emergence of new R&B acts such as Ashanti, Trey Songs, Omarion, Sierra, Christina Milian, Mario, Keisha Cole and Akon. Ashanti's eponymous debut album topped both U.S. Billboard 200 and Top R&B, Hip Hop Albums charts. It earned her three Grammy nominations winning one for the Best Contemporary R&B Album. R&B newcomer Chris Brown released his self-titled album in 2005 which debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. His debut single, Run It, peaked on the Billboard Hot 100, Hot R&B, Hip Hop Songs and the U.S. Radio Songs. During this time also came the emergence of R&B songwriters. Brian Michael Cox co-wrote Usher's Burn and Confessions Part 2 2005, Mariah Carey's Shake It Off and Don't Forget About Us 2006, and Chris Brown's Say Goodbye 2006. Carrie Hilson would co-write songs Mary J. Blige's Take Me As I Am 2006, Omarion's Ice Box 2006, and Sierra's Like a Boy 2006. Rico Love Co. wrote Usher's Throwback 2005, Carrie Hilson's Energy 2008, Pleasure P's Boyfriend No. 2 2008. The Dream wrote Rihanna's Umbrella 2007, Jay Holiday's Bed and Usher's Moving Mountains and Trading Places 2008. 
Ni Yo wrote Mario's Let Me Love You, Rihanna's Take a Bow and Unfaithful, and Beyonce's Irreplaceable 2008. .According to Billboard, the most commercially successful R&B acts of the decade were Usher, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Mariah Carey, Rihanna, Chris Brown and Ni Yo. Topic. Electronic dance music Towards the end of the decade, electronic dance music began to dominate Western charts, and by 2014, pop music had already been permeated by it. The media in 2009 ran articles proclaiming a new era of different electropop stars, and saw a rise in popularity of several electropop artists. Electropop is described as a variant of synth pop with heavy emphasis on its electronic sound. The genre has seen a revival of popularity and major influence since the 2000s. In the Sound of 2009 poll of 130 music experts conducted for the BBC, 10 of the top 15 artists named were of the electropop genre. Lady Gaga had major commercial success since 2008 with her debut album The Fame. Music writer Simon Reynolds noted that, Everything about Gaga came from Electroclash, except the music, which wasn't particularly 1980s. <laughs> Topic. Trap music EDM. In the 2010s, a style of electronic dance music EDM incorporated elements of trap music, and began gaining popularity. Artists in this decade that delved into the trap sound include Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, and Kelly Clarkson. Topic. Scientific studies. A scientific report study that examined over 464,000 recordings of popular music recorded between 1955 and 2010 found less variety in pitch progressions, growing average loudness levels, less diverse instrumentation and recording techniques, and less timbral variety, which declined after reaching a peak in the 1960s. Scientific American's John Matson reported that this seems to support the popular anecdotal observation that pop music of yore was better, or at least more varied, than today's top 40 stuff. In May 2018, researchers at the University of California, Irvine, concluded that pop music has become sadder over the last 30 years. The elements of happiness and brightness have eventually been replaced with the electronic beats making the pop music more sad yet danceable. <laughs> Topic. Technology and media In the 1940s improved microphone design allowed a more intimate singing style and 10 or 20 years later, inexpensive and more durable 45R, P.M. records for singles, revolutionized the manner in which pop has been disseminated. This helped to move pop music to a record, radio, film star system. Another technological change was the widespread availability of television in the 1950s, with televised performances. Pop stars had to have a visual presence. In the 1960s, the introduction of inexpensive, portable transistor radios meant that teenagers in the developed world could listen to music outside of the home. Multi-track recording from the 1960s, and digital sampling from the 1980s have also been utilized as methods for the creation and elaboration of pop music. By the early 1980s, the promotion of pop music had been greatly affected by the rise of music television channels like MTV, which 
favored those artists such as Michael Jackson and Madonna who had a strong visual appeal. A recent study held by New York University in which 643 participants had to rank how familiar a pop song is to them. Songs from the decade 1960-69 turned out to be the most memorable, a lot more than songs from recent years 2000-2015. Topic. Legitimacy in music criticism The latter half of the 20th century included a large-scale trend in American culture in which the boundaries between art and pop music were increasingly blurred. Between 1950 and 1970, there was a debate of pop versus art. Since then, certain music publications have embraced its legitimacy. According to Pop Matters' Robert Loss, there's a strong argument for the rockist mode in music criticism, that it exists, and that it's harmful, and poptimism has positioned itself as a corrective, an antidote. In general, the old guard of rock critics and journalists is depicted as a bunch of bricklayers for the foundations of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. True in part, which is to say, false. Like film studies, rock criticism of the late 60s and the 70s was an attempt to make popular music worthy of study, it was poptimism before its day. Topic. International spread of pop music Pop music has been dominated by the American and from the mid 1960s British music industries whose influence has made pop music something of an international monoculture but most regions and countries have their own form of pop music sometimes producing local versions of wider trends and lending them local characteristics some of these trends, for example Europop, have had a significant impact of the development of the genre, according to Grove Music Online. Western-derived pop styles, whether coexisting with or marginalizing distinctively local genres, have spread throughout the world and have come to constitute stylistic common denominators in global commercial music cultures. Some non-Western countries, such as Japan, have developed a thriving pop music industry, most of which is devoted to Western-style pop. The spread of Western-style pop music has been interpreted variously as representing processes of Americanization, homogenization, modernization, creative appropriation, cultural imperialism, or a more general process of globalization. In Korea, pop music's influence has led to the birth of boy bands and girl groups which have gained overseas renown through both their music and aesthetics. Korean co-ed groups, mixed gender groups have not been as successful. Topic: See also Honorific nicknames in popular music. Origins of rock and roll. Popular music pedagogy. List of popular music genres. History of music Public domain music